so if you have a car and you you get in it and you just hit the starter you're and just keep hitting the starter and don't let it run you're eventually going to run the battery dead well that's kind of how plants work like the leaves on your plant is like the alternator on your car and the roots are the battery because they store energy the, the leaves take in the photosynthesis and, and they store it in the roots so when you season long graze, the cows come along and bite it off every day, day after day. It's like sitting in your car and hitting the starter and you're, you're eventually your battery goes dead and your car ain't gonna go nowhere. And your plants are the same way. If you just bite them off every day and every day, your, your roots will finally die because your battery's dead, your storage is gone. And so that's why I got away from season long grazing and, and went to a mob grazing where they, they only graze on a piece one or two days to get moved on. I'm Charlie Totten. I live here at Chamberlain, South Dakota. We've been ranching on this particular place for the last 21 years. We raised two daughters and a son here. Uh, they've all left the farm, but they come back on weekends and help me work cattle and stuff and my wife, we've been married for 36 years. I grew up working for my uncles and they summer followed and planted wheat. And that ground washed and blowed every other year. It was just a god awful thing I was ever involved in. <laughs> it's hard to, you know, sorry uncles. <laughs> but, uh, but after I knew that there had to be something better and so when I got a chance to manage some land, so it just makes me proud of myself that I'm doing better than what I've seen other people do. I guess it's just a self-pride thing that makes me get up and go every day. Well, I was in high school, the, the local NRCS person put on a range judging school, and I think it was by luck I wound up winning the range judging school. I guess I can still remember the day, and that's been a long time ago. So it must have made an impression on me. And then after, you know, got out of high school, got married, and then this bootstraps program come along. And uh, we was in the second group there in the early 90s. And it was, it was a two-year program, and they made us pencil everything out. You know, is it, gonna, is it gonna be good for the family? Is it gonna be good for the community? Is it gonna pay? You know, is it gonna pencil out? And it was at a time when a lot of ranches was going broke, so it was a really good time to learn how to be the most efficient operator you could be. And then after the bootstraps program, you know, we went to just a lot of these one-day classes like ranchers workshops and, and pasture walks. And, and then we finally went on some bus trips that the NRCS and Extension Service put on. And, and, and when, you, when you're on a pasture walk or a bus trip, you're, you're, you're on the guy's place. He, he can't really lie to you. You can see if it's working or not. So a lot of them was, was you know, eye-opening things just because, you know, it, it wasn't in a classroom. You could see what the guy was doing. Somewhere in the early 2000s, I went to the South Dakota Grazing School. And, and right after the grazing school, I started this, this mob grazing rotational grazing system here on this place. The NRCS and Extension Service can give you a lot of technical support if you know that, you know, if you're going to start a grazing plan, you know, just how many pounds of grass do you have? And then professional type people are good at coming out and measuring your grass and, and, and giving you an idea what, what, what potential your ranch has. It made sense to me that uh, you know, you let everything grow up and go to seed and then you graze everything off so that the weeds, everything, plants you don't like, everything gets eaten. Then I implemented mob grazing so that the cattle got an evener diet every day rather than just turn them out for 20 days on a pasture and making them grub it to the ground. And we figured out it only took half as much land as some of the cows. So therefore, <clears throat> instead of running twice as many cows, we extended our grazing season by like four months. So now we only feed cows two or three months out of the winter instead of five or six. And it's because of our management, same amount of cows in the same place, but just the difference in management, we've gained that much grass, that much grazing season. This grazing school, it, it's a lot about plant ID and pasture usage and, and you know, and how do you, you know, how do you get the most out of your natural resources 
and yet improve them at the same time. You know, I mean, it, it's pretty easy to overgraze and get a lot of production, and it's pretty easy to undergraze and improve your natural resources, but hopefully the grazing school will teach you you can do both at the same time. A quote I got from an old rancher was, utilize what you, what you have and manage for what you want. One of the interesting things when you start start watching what cattle eat every day is a lot of things we used to think was weeds is what cattle really like. So so we give these cattle these little plots for the grazing school and you're expecting them to eat western wheatgrass and you come back the next day and they ate the lamb's quarters out of the pens. And the only place that it's really grubbed to the ground is where there might be some field bindweed. That's probably their favorite, favorite thing. And so, so like you, you kind of, you kind of come away with a whole new perspective. You know, why, why would I want to use chemicals to spray these weeds if my cows really like them? It's just an eye opener when you watch cows every day and figure out that, that what you think is great ain't, ain't what the cow thinks is great. Yeah, I'm having fun, but it's because the neighbors all talk about me coffee shop, and I enjoy it. Passing on a ranch in better shape than you found it would, you know, no matter, as long as it's improved, it's, it's gonna be a great thing. It's not sustainable if, if your land is, is degrading, someday the world's gonna run out of food. So I mean, it's just in the larger scheme of things, you have to, you have to be protecting your land or, or we're all in trouble. <laughs>